The food haven of the Philippines. This is what Iloilo was officially declared as. To be honest, I didn't know much about Ilongo food, nor did I know that it was a food haven. I always felt that it was overshadowed by nearby Bacolod. Boy, was I wrong. Not only is this city clean, well-organized, and unique, but its people are warm, inviting, and lambing. In this episode, we will be eating our way through the city, from some of the best salads I've had in the country, to an extreme but tasty pork rectum dish, to the tastiest grilled roast chicken I've ever had, and an extravagant seafood feast by the coast. We did this in a day. If you want to do the same, bring stretch pants. You're going to see me speechless quite a bit in this episode. I say wow and oh my god countless of times. My brain could not manage all the new information that I was learning and my body barely made it through all the food we ate. This is probably one of the best places to come if you want a good snapshot of Western Visayan cuisine. Iloilo is a young dynamic city that has so much potential, filled with food lovers. No wonder it's constantly rated as one of the most livable cities in the Philippines. The urban planning here makes sense, you still have some historic architecture, and you're not far from some of the country's best beaches. The province has an abundance of beautiful produce, and their cuisine is resourceful, comforting, steeped in history, having been influenced by both the Spanish colonization and Chinese trading, yet it remains uncomplicated and lets the ingredients shine. I needed a guide to help me figure this all out, so we reached out to Chef Tibong, a staunch advocate of Ilongo cuisine and author of the recently released Flavors of Iloilo cookbook. Like any good food tour, we started off by looking at the local produce in the market. This is called bukaka. <laughs> it's uh, we call it bukaka. The red one. Really? Yeah, we call it bukaka because it's opening. Uh, it's okay. sweet. Mm. And it's just eating like a fruit, right? It's very nice. It's kind of like a, it's like it's a very earthy, light. It's earthy, but like a light guayabano. Yes. But right? it's earthy Subtle. and uh, it's, it's, and people eat this as a snack because I've seen this yes. a few times. This is snack. So this is the vegetable area. It's really spicy. Yeah. Because a lot of these now are the ones that come from Taiwan, yeah, apparently. Yes. Yeah. And that's the batuan. Ah, yes, of course. Yes. You, you guys use batuan quite a bit also. Yes, for, for our sour ingredients. Yeah. Because what's the best with batuan is that it's not so sour. So this is the meat section. And what, what would you say is the primary protein that people eat here? The no, native chicken. Native chicken. The longest are fan of native chicken. We used to have our stall there. So almost our family have, have a meat. Ah, okay. Yes. So you know how to butcher everything? Yes. Yeah. But okay. my dad would Hold me if I, I touch a knife or something, you know. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning, folks. Good morning. After a tour of the market, it was time to try an amazing eatery next to the river. Hi, can you tell me about where we are now? Yeah, we're now at Nora's Eatery. They started from 1969. This is the second generation okay. owner already. This is a well-known place, especially for office workers and the people who travel from out of town. They would have their breakfast or brunch at Nora's Eatery. What's your favorite thing? Usually they have this in adobadong uh, catfish, alimusan. Oh wow, okay, nice. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Okay. You know, and uh, of course they're in the Wabu. And of course these are just traditional uh, we have cooking. You have some Tagalog and, ones, yes. some grilled ones, yes. but some Ilongo dishes also, yes. right? Yes, uh, and the only good part of our grilling is we only use salt. Okay. We don't marinate them thoroughly so that we would be able to... Uh, really taste the fit. This is what I love about coming to the province, is I never know where to start. There's always so much... Start with soup. <laughs> Start with soup? Okay. Yes. Start with soup. Usually we call our soup here in Sinabawan. Sinabawan. Yeah, that's with batuan and kamatis only. The fish is very fatty. Yes, and it's, and it's the, 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 it's the mata. Yes. Yeah. It's the Sinabawan. Mm. So it's not too sour? No, not at all. So what would you say is kind of like the, um, the signature of Ilongo food? It's never complex. Our food is never complex. As you can see, uh, the flavor of the fish is there. Simply cooked, traditional. So there's a real, like what we saw in the market, there's a real pride behind the ingredients, I feel. We always uh, would uh, 
appreciate our fisher folks and even farmers. So after soup, what do you? What would you recommend? Uh, we, we call this pinamal han. Pinamal. Pinamal. Pinamal han. Han. Pinamal han. Uh, it's pakchil. Okay. okay. So, but it's made of, from ginger. And, abo is a kind of fish that doesn't taste anything. Okay. Wala talaga siyang lasa. But you have to sun dry it until it gets rotten. Rotten? Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it becomes the most flavorful fish. That's where all the yes. complexity yes. comes yes. from. Okay. Because of the fermentation. Yeah. Self fermentation. Now I'm, Very much now I'm really curious. Yes. It's a soft, uh, delicate. Uh, so this is, you said, cooked with ginger? Yes. And uh, as usual, toba vinegar. And. Uh, Oh, yeah, garlic. The um, texture is extremely surprising. Yes. So that definitely comes from decomposition. Yes. So it's like almost powdery, grainy. Yes. And this one is paklai. It's from uh, coconut beef. Sometimes they use the mm. souring ingredients, which is uh, kamias, mm -hmm. where it's really good. Crunchy. Some sugar in there. Yes. Yeah. The food of Bilongo is just, it's typically. Uh, cook almost the same, except they just add a, a few, but it's not a fusion thing. But I think what's really important here to note, it's, it's extremely well cooked. Yes. Like it's not overcooked vegetables, yes. it's really cooked right, there's a bit of crunch to it, and yes. bite, yes. which is really important. I like that a lot. They tried their version of the chicken pork and dough, in a chowete. Same process, right? Vinegar, yes. laurel leaves, yes. garlic. Everything, oh, everything. except a with the chowete oil. A so chowete. started with the chowete oil. Yes. And more particularly, it's native chicken, right? Yes, it's okay. native chicken. So why, why the love of native chicken? Well, basically, it's siguro abundant. This for me is calling me because I love, I love stuff like this. Yes, it's uh, puso, uh, ensilada na puso sang saging. Mm. Very good appetizer. Yeah. There's a sweetness, but yeah, not too sweet. Yeah, it opens everything yeah. up. And then there's a nice... I mean, the tuba vinegar is, yeah, is And it bursts with, with good flavor. Okay, I'm gonna oh, try this that with is, the pork. This, yes. is, so this is what you're saying you come here for. Yes. Anyhow, mm. nababu. I mean, simple, but salt. when well done, yes, it changes salt. everything. Okay, last bite. That's another appetizer. Let's try that. Oh, me and my pork. This is labanos, right? Labanos in a palaya. Yeah. Very nice. They pair perfectly with fatty food. And you're like, you want to keep going for some fat yes. and balance it out with yeah, some vinegar. Yes. Some... Mm. So fish, same as the pork, just grilled with salt. What's the name of this fish? The lupani. The lupani. Yes. Okay. It's the first time I actually tried that. It's, yes. It's really good, right? It's really good. Filipino food lives in extremes. Yes. Right? Sometimes very salty, sometimes very vinegary. Sometimes yes. I feel like there's an overappreciation for something that's incredibly sour, yes. something that's incredibly uh, salty. Yes. But I've always been a fan of cuisines that kind of live in the middle, and I feel like it's a balance. It's really yes. well balanced, like, and it's all—it's very coherent. Also, yes. how the dishes all come together. Wow, it's really good. I mean, this is yeah, here is more. Thank you for such a great, a great start to the day. This is just the first. Stop I know. There. I know. We'll have more. I'm gonna try to keep some space. After a very fresh introduction to the cuisine, Tibong brought me to one of his childhood favorites. His father had a butchery in the market, so this was a quick hearty meal that people who work around here gravitate towards. Owned by the Igbante family since 1969, the space is stuck into the central market's outskirts. It's a smoky spot that emits an aroma that tells you what's cooking inside, even from the sidewalk. So what's, what was your first memory coming here to Cyrus? Well, in the 70s, my dad uh, brought me here and had pork chop. Yeah. What's this? That That's really Arus good. Valenciana. Ah, really? <laughs> yes. All right, so tell me about this place. They, they've been open since 1969 or something. Also, okay. My first experience is with, with my dad. So because this is my dad's friend also. I mean, all, almost all the Ilongos come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, they have this biga biga they're famous for. The linaga. Yeah. And uh, the pork chop, which we would usually use. Banana ketchup. Banana yep. ketchup. I'm all for it. Yes. I'm all for it. Awesome. It's always banana ketchup. And then arroz. Arroz Valenciana. Valenciana and okoy. Uh, yes, this is like okoy, but this is lobo lobo. It's a very small fish. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like silvery fish. Okay. Then you just put the bottle. Like a fish bag. Yeah. Ah, okay. Then you dip it with the cinema. Cinema. Okay, nilaga first. Nilaga. It's beautiful. 
right? I simple. Mean, simple. Um, the salt, the salt in the broth really comes through. Yes. And very soft mm. meat. Yes. The meat is extremely tender. Yeah. And there's no residual fattiness. Yes. It's a very clean, clean broth. Big up, big up. Big up, big up. Rectum. Rectum. So this is the. Yes, yes. This is not even the butt. It's inside of the inside butt. Inside of the butt. <laughs> what animal? Uh, pork. Okay. Really good. Mm. Mm. No awful. Yeah. Flavor. No aftertaste. No clinging oiliness. Yes. Like really nice and clean. Okay. Aros Valenciana. Yes. This makes me smile to see this on a menu. This because I mean it just showcases Spanish heritage. Yes. In the most inspicuous of ways, yes. right? It's kind of like very in a calendaria. You have Aros Valenciana. And this is not strong flavored, so that you can eat it with the dishes. Mm. So it's simple, but so lots of turmeric in there. Uh, with liver. Yeah, liver, liver, chicken, anything you want. Okay, I'm gonna try the pak chou. Yeah, you turn pak chou. It's so it good. so good. Yeah. Wow. And the way he makes it wow. with pak chou, right? And you know what, everyone? I grew up eating the pak chou that's like drenched in mung tamas. Yes. And this one, ever since we, we would eat here, you know what's the best part with the eatery series in Iruilo? Ten years ago, when you come back, it's still the same. They've maintained their the flavors. So the that's why, yeah, that's why they were able to sustain their business because of the way they cook it. Yeah. So it's passed on from one generation to the other. The lobo lobo. So a certain, yeah, a type of like white bait silverfish. Yes. Good, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Right? A little bit of flour. Yes. Pork chop. Pork chop. Yeah, it's just regular pork that. chop actually. I mean, I can tell why you kind of keep coming here. Mm -hmm. It kind of has an experience to it. What I love about this is it's a very different array of dishes from the last one. Yes. In terms of how they cook it, in terms of the flavor, how developed the flavor is. Yes. That one was playing with a lot of acid, a lot of subtlety. This one's a bit more bold, earthy, kind of like They have um, their, their own meaty distinct flavors. flavors yeah. When you go from yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so this is all the dried fish. Yes, dried fish. It comes from Estancia, from Carles. Wow. Uh, these this. are all the yeah, products of uh, yes, That's La Bajita. That's the best substitute for bacalao. Baja, eh, bacalao. Yes, yeah. bacalao. Uh, they use that in Cavite yes. a lot. Yes. Yeah, bacalao. And this one is the calcad, which is usually used for vegetable soup. And then that's the guinamos. Yeah, that's the guinamos. I'm trying it. So just raw like this? Yes. Okay, I've never actually tried it's it. It's a small one. Small one. <laughs> Not the, whole no, thing. not the whole thing. <laughs> not the whole thing. <laughs> not the whole thing. See, it gives ah. a distinct flavor. It's oh. not too salty. It's good for your pak meat. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you have to bring a, this home. You yeah. have to bring this home. It has um. I can't put my finger on it. This is what makes bat choy very good. There's a certain kind of like... I can't put my finger on it, but... It's fermented, yeah. but not too strong. Yeah. And the flavor is not... It's not coying. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's very, it's very powerful. Yeah, powerful, but yeah. especially the smell. But it does not. Yeah, it doesn't yes. stay or it's stick. Stay, yes. And so these are what? Uh, small or CC. Ah, CC. Remember, okay. it, it, cleaning the and small this is with, ones with vinegar. Yes, vinegar okay. or salted water. Got it. So here we also have uh, different. Uh, wow, this you is. You know, this is tocino. I've actually never seen that. Yeah, it's a tocino. It's salmonete used for paxil. Okay. But this time they fillet it and uh, put some caramel in. Ah, and then this is just eaten as a. S can okay. it be eaten as a snack? Yeah, also, you or? just fry it and. Pwede ah. siya makaon hilaw. Hindi. Hindi. You have to fry it. Fry it, it talaga. Yeah, fry it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think people realize how incredibly organized this dried fish session is. Yes. It is almost immaculate. Like if you look at the packaging of the top, yes. it's immaculate. Color coordinated almost. Yes. And it's it's not just this stall, it's every stall. Like so when you walk yes. through here, yes. it's a nice experience. Yes. Like it actually feels yes. like something you want to buy a lot from. Not something like, oh it smells like dried fish, I wanna get out of here. Yes. You take time. And I, for me, I, I the like just the patterns yes. like of how the dried fish are made and everything. It's, it's, just, it's gorgeous. Look, look at that. Even, yes. It's beautiful. Like it's beautiful. Like all yes. especially that looks yes. like little flowers. Mm -hmm. It's time for chicken and Rawitz is the place to be. Their stall in the market has been selling dressed native chicken called Dadag for the last 35 years. 
A decade ago, owners Jesus Haneo Jr. and wife Evangeline decided to start serving their lechon manok, and I am so thankful for that. The already tastier native chicken is meticulously cleaned before being rubbed in a paste of spices, salt, and lemongrass. Marinated in vinegar and calamansi, then stuffed with more lemongrass before being doused in a flavorful achuete oil. It's a masterpiece, and when paired with the drama of the market, a feast for all the senses. Honestly, one of the best chicken dishes in the country. Okay. So, or so, so this is really how it's served. No utensils. Yes, this okay. really nice. So there we go with the sinama. Look at that. Beautiful. Yes, it's an old... Uh, filtered already? Yeah, filtered, yes. So usually how old do these go for? That's what, that was my, one of my questions. If you want the, this color or the peppers to stay long, you have to refill it. Don't let it dry up. Do the honors. Okay. Just break it. It's still hot. Ooh. I think. Yeah. So just hold. You yes. might need your help here. There you go. Yeah. There. And then dip. Yeah, oh. dip. If you want, you want to try it without dipping it so that you will sting this there. Mm. Huh? Super tender. Yeah. Real good wow. chicken. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the chicken in itself makes an amazing difference. The lemongrass is there, but not crazy amounts. No, yeah. Marinade. Not too much. It's not like acidic or anything. Yes. Keeps it nice and juicy. I, I would personally eat this over any other grilled chicken. Yes. Like, it's really tasty. Mmm. Yes. Mmm. You could probably eat one of these alone, easy. Yeah. Because it's not like that much meat also, right? And so this is open all day? Yeah. But around 4 o'clock, they, they, they would serve beer and... Uh, ah, so you like, Cool. Yeah. So okay. it's like, yeah, it's like a... So it's, a can, it's a true market. A true, yeah, it's a true market. A true meeting yes, place of people. Yes. That's amazing. And this is where I do my tambuan before. It. Okay. Yeah. I will set up the places, give them this, have uh, different dishes. Uh, Prepared here. Yeah, prepared here. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. So good. I'm literally pulling it off, and right away it exposes the, the lemongrass. Yes, so it just shows you how what little meat there is is extremely flavorful. Yes. Mm. Man, it's like 10:30 a.m. This is our. It's a third stop right here. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes tourists around the country have a hard time finding good food. Just like any other city, you can find good and bad, but Iloilo proves itself as a place where good food is all over and always accessible. Another must try is Beige Eatery. Put up by a former OFW with a love for cooking and perfection, the place gets packed because of its consistency, heritage longo dishes, and fresh seafood. Ako pala si Bruce. Buena pe. Yung cook at saka mayari ng beige eatery na to. Ah, paano ko naisipan itong gawin itong eatery na to? Eh kasi OFW dati ako, trailer driver ako sa Saudi. Eh nakita ko nung napapagod na rin, kaya naisipan kong umuwi. Sabi nila, marunong daw akong magluto, kaya yun. Sinimulan kong magluto ng pakunti-kunti, yung nagsimula sa maliit. Hanggang sa ganito nakalaki ngayon. Ang advantage kasi pag uh, ikaw yung owner at saka ikaw yung nagluluto, alam mo yung mga gusto mo. Hindi mo inaasa sa iba. Gaya ng isda, kailangan laging sariwa. Pinipili mo yung magandang klaseng karne, baboy. At lahat-lahat yung mga condiments. Kaya mas maganda yung ikaw na yung nagluluto, ikaw pa yung namamilengke, ikaw pa yung the same time owner ka rin. Kasi alam mo yung paano magpatakbo. Kaya pag nagsimula kayong magnegosyo, simulan mo na. Kung kailangan ka renderya, marunong ka magluto. Kung barber shop, marunong ka gumupit. E paano pag laging absent yung mga tauhan mo, gaya niya, no? Masisira negosyo mo pag hindi ka inline talaga. Fourth stop. Why is Iloilo seen as kind of like really popular for its seafood? Well, basically, we have where the bounties of the seas were surrounded. The island of Panay is surrounded by ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rojas, being the seafood capital of the Philippines, has also a lot of abundant uh, seafood. How far is Rojas from here? It's around uh, two hours. Two hours drive. From okay. Here. It's okay. just two hours. Okay, so what do we have in front of us here? Well, let's start with this. Uh, this is the linatik. We just boil the calabasa. 
cook it with shrimp and we put uh, malunggay and uh, sitaw. Mm. Yum. Yes. And then this is the scallops? That's the scallops, you just saute it. Well, of course, now they use oyster sauce possibly. Mm -hmm. It's like in adobo without such sweating. And would you say all the seafood is kind of interchangeable? Uh, yes, like I think the preparation? so. Yes, yes. This is the first thing I've tried today that tastes more on the Chinese side. Yes, because we're the influence of the Chinese mm -hmm. side. Also. This one is the unborn egg or and intestine of the chicken. Chicken biga biga. Okay. It's in adobo in atsweti. I, mean. I had a hard time picturing what an unborn. So it's not like bulut or anything like that. No, no. it's really it's really like uh, an ovo. It's ova thing that it's clear that you can see the yolk. Okay. It's quite delicate yeah. to look at, and then when you cook it, it just hardens. It's like mm. hard boiled. Egg. So, so this mean, is very exotic for for some for a lot people, of people, but yes. Uh, but quite good though. The flavor is really good. Yeah. I mean the, the adobo style sauce. Yes. So you have the liking now of the yeah, adobo I really like it. Yeah, I do. Yes. It's a wrong notion that our food is sweet. Sometimes they use sugar because they don't want to use MSG. Is this something like, would you say kind of like the younger generation? Are they also no, they do. really into kind of the local food? Yeah. You know my grandniece, you know what she likes to eat? Linaga, local cuisine. Mm. At this point, I couldn't really eat much anymore, so Tibong thought it would be nice and a good idea to eat some cakes to reset her palates. And Maridel's is the place to be. Everyone I talk to about going to Ilo, by the way, you've become an institution. She's a little camera shy, but she's here. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. They, everyone told me to come by here for two specific thing, uh, things. The first being the duck pal. And then a lot of people actually talked about the guava pie, which we'll get tomorrow, but also the Snickers pie. Let's try this. This banoffee. As the banoffee. Yeah, this okay. snicker spy oh and this. Let's this try the banoffee. Mmm. Uh -huh. mm. The banana so is almost ice cream like. Yes. And you freeze it. It's so nice. Yeah. Snickers pie. This looks incredible. It's terrible. So this is sugar free, right? <laughs> no. Sugar food. <laughs> Mmm. That's rich. But delicious. It it's actually good. does that it does feel like a, a much better snicker. And this hey, is the duck pie. That's my favorite, the duck pie. Should give a big bite. Should I? Yeah. The bread, the bread. Wow. Huh? So this one's made with lots of breadcrumbs, margarine. Mmm. <laughs> I'm just smiling because Duck I can imagine it's so good. Even the bread. Yeah, the bread's really nice. I'm being spoiled here. Just when you thought it was over, the city keeps on giving. A food trip would not be complete without passing by Breakthrough. Started in the 80s, it is now a shining light in the region, presenting the best seafood dishes from the area in both traditional and modern ways. You can't come to Ilo Ilo without passing through Breakthrough, and this spread was insane. This is intense. I mean, I think everything has been intense today. This is, yeah, this is Imbao. Imbao, yes. Yeah, it's right. It's, it's, uh, I actually it's caught weird. some Imbao in Basilan, but they Basilan. were not this big. Very garlicky broth, very clean. I think everyone has to just admire the size of this. Oh, it's like a one bite thing. Mm. Yeah. This is huge. Wow. And if you don't know how to cook it, well, it's gonna be tough. No, that's perfectly good. You gotta be too chewy. This one is just, just right. Melty. Yes. When you break through the screen, you kind of get that release of flavor. Wow. This one I have, I want you to try this one first. So this, this is, is fresh uh, bagoong. Okay. It's just... Uh, this is balayan also. Uh, that's just, uh, yeah, the, the small the shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. Fresh, then they just put the uh, calamansi. Mm. And some pepper. And some chili, yeah. Wow. And so Very this is used fresh. as a condiment, uh, a condiment mostly. Yes. I think people at this point will see that I'm visibly struggling. This has mm. been an amazing day of eating. And I love that you still have restaurants that are kind of like just by the beach and you kind of think you're really far away from the city, but you're literally 
an eight minute drive away. Yes. <laughs> Try it. Eat. Balayan with the rice. What I like about the alegi rice, it's not just the crab fat as well. It's kind of all the, anything that goes around it too, yes. right? It's, it's garlicky and yeah. yeah. Now, raw lobster. Raw lobster, sashimi, you can have a bit of wasabi. Wasabi. Some soy sauce. Lobster. Mmm, it's so tender. And then how do you guys use, uh, eat your diwali? Yes, yeah, diwali. Just open it, simply, and it's just steamed. It's, uh, then all you have to do is just get this thing from the shell and eat it. And then the dipping sauce is? Oh, uh, sometimes uh, you can have butter or... What's this? Sometimes none at all. It's the flavor of the diwal itself is really good. So this is just like a diwal broth, right? Yeah. It's, uh, the diwal itself by itself is really good. Mmm, really clean. Although you may find this in any part of the country, but it's not as it's not as often. Young. Yeah, not as often as you'd want to for uh, sure. By accident, but it's in Rojas and in in Negros. They have this. It's really, uh, you see season, it abundant. By ah, by season. This is famous because they, make a lot they, they always usually would start uh, the trend serving it, and then everyone starts doing. Yes, it. they're the trendsetter. <laughs> And take the fats, it's really good. So this is a? Managat. Managat. Yeah, that's the in thing. Before it's the wall, now it's managat. Really? Managat's like the trendy fish? Yes, here. A lot, very fatty. Yes. And it's wow. Good. And it's good. That fat is yes. almost meaty. It's almost like, it's way fattier than like bangus. Yes. Yeah, just the dock. So this is kind of like the outlier, right? Everything is seafood. Yes. That's good. Mm. Really good. It's 3 p.m. now, so we've been eating nonstop for close <laughs> to 10 hours. Um, is that I think there's an understanding of what balance and equilibrium should be in dishes, yes. which I think is very kind of like a, a hallmark from what I understand just from today in terms of Ilongo cuisine of just Respe like you said, respecting the main ingredient, making sure that it's not outshined by anything else yes. in the dish, and making sure that everything kind of plays well together. It it kind of reminds me of how they you know they call this the city of hearts, the city of love. love. It's like there's, a there's a lot of titles. Yeah, there. there's like a, there's like a light touch to the food. It's yes. like a lumbing touch to the food yes. in terms of making sure you're taking care of it as you would a loved one, it which I think is really great. It, it has, has a soul, soul. correct? Yeah. And it almost soul. I was maybe particularly ignorant about it, but I never really heard much. Yes. When you come to uh, Iloilo, yes, you know, go after the well sought out popular dishes that you've probably heard and read about a thousand mm -hmm. times and that are probably very well recorded in guidebooks and online websites and things, but mm -hmm. feel free to kind of stray away from them as well in mm -hmm. terms of going for the vegetable dishes, the salads, the innards, the offal, because I feel like those are really what paint a true picture of the everyday kind of like dishes that people really truly appreciate here. So I mean, hopefully this guide was useful to people who are watching it and hopefully people get to try everything we tried today. But not, not, not in one day. Don't do it in one day. Do it in five days and you'll be way better off. Do it in a week. Stay in Italy for a week.